Let's talk about one of the Redux plugins that is probably the most interestingly named, Redux Thunk. This library is used to aid with handling asynchronous action creators. We're going to divide this video in which we discuss Redux Thunk into two separate sections. First, we're going to discuss why Redux Thunk exists, and then we're going to talk about how to use Redux Thunk. The purpose of Redux itself is to hold our application state. One of the great features of Redux is that we can change our state in a very well-defined pattern. And it's a pattern that we repeat over and over in our applications. We call an action creator. This produces an action. The action flows into our middleware, then our reducers, and our reducers produce our new application state, which then flows into React. We then sit around and wait for the user to initiate basically some other change inside of our application that repeats the process all over again. So this process, as I've laid it out, works just fine and dandy for any type of synchronous change in a Redux application. By synchronous, I mean that when we call an action creator, we immediately return an action, which instantly flows into our middleware and our reducers. The vast majority of web applications we build, however, need to fetch data through asynchronous channels. In other words, it's much more common that when we call an action creator, we actually want to go and fetch some amount of data from some API or you know, some asynchronous action. And only when that request resolves are we actually ready to create an action. Vanilla Redux is not set up for handling this type of operation right out of the box. So how do we handle these asynchronous action creators? How do we make asynchronous requests? That's where Redux Thunk comes into play. The purpose of Redux Thunk is to give us direct control over the dispatch method. The dispatch method is a method, a part of the Redux store that contains our application state. In this cycle diagram, you can really think of the dispatch method as handling everything essentially on the bottom right hand corner. When we normally call an action creator and it returns an action, the action ends up being passed into this dispatch method. So this is really one of those things that has been working behind the scenes all along. You have been using the dispatch method in any vanilla Redux application you've already been using. We've already been making use of the dispatch. You can really think of this dispatch as a big funnel of sorts. We call an action creator, it returns an action, and this action kind of falls into our dispatch, which makes sure that the action gets sent off to all of our different reducers. So you can kind of imagine as being a big funnel or a pipe. We throw an action into it and out comes some new state on the other side. So let's see how Redux Thunk works in, pro in, in practice. I have a small React application already wired up. This React application just fetches a list of users and then renders a single LI for each user. In particular, we're showing the e user's email and name. And so it's a pretty straightforward application. On the Redux side of things, I have a single action creator called fetch users. The purpose of fetch users is to, is to make a single API request and then in theory, return that data back to our reducers. And so I've got a comment right here for right now that just says Van vanilla Redux expects us to return a simple action here. And so this is a rule that we don't really want to have to obey. When we have a request object here, I do not yet have any data to return from this function. I have to wait for my request to resolve before I actually have any data to send across to my dispatch method. So let's make use of Redux Thunk. The first thing we're going to do with Redux Thunk is we need to realize that the, all the existing rules for action creators kind of go out the window. Vanilla Redux expects us to return an action, which is a plain JavaScript object. Redux Thunk, on the other hand, enables one other return type, and that is a plain JavaScript function. So only with Redux Thunk are we able to return a plain JavaScript function like this. The first argument to this function that I just added is going to be the dispatch method. And as a reminder, the dispatch method is essentially that big funnel or that big kind of pipe. If we pass an action into dispatch, it's going to be sent off to all of our different reducers. So let's write a little bit of code here to complete the exercise and then do a walkthrough on exactly what it does. I'm going to wait for my request to resolve with some amount of data. And then only when the request has actually resolved am I going to dispatch an action. In my case, it's going to have type fetch profiles and payload 
of data. Now let's give this a shot in the browser and then come back and walk through this code that I just added. Over in the browser, I'm gonna refresh my page. I wait for half a second and the request completes and I now have visible to, my, to me the list of users with all of their respective email addresses. So this is data that's coming across from some API that's already been set up. But that was a little bit of code that we put, to, put down without actually discussing what's going on, so let's do a quick discussion. Here's a sequence of events of what's going on behind the scenes. Right now, our app component is calling an action creator called fetch users. And so that's happening inside of app.js. Whenever the component is about to mount, it automatically calls the fetch users action creator. Next, Axios is making a request to our API. So we can see that here on line four. Axios is automatically reaching out to this API grabbing some amount of JSON and returning it to us. Usually, all of our action creators are expected to return a plain JavaScript object, but because we're using Redux Thunk, we get this additional return type from our action creator of a function. So rather than returning a plain object here, I'm returning a function. Redux Thunk, which is our middleware, sees that this is a function and not a plain action, and immediately invokes the function with the dispatch method. Some amount of time passes in which we're, you can kind of imagine that we're kind of sitting around here inside of the function. And then finally the request is going to resolve some amount of unknown time later. It could be 100 milliseconds or it could be a whole second. We don't really know. Once our request resolves with our data, we then finally call the dispatch method with our action that we want to send off to our reducers. So this is how Redux Thunk is actually working behind the scenes. If you like the video, this video, click on the link in the description to go to rallycoding.com and sign up for my email list. My name is Steven Greider, and once a week I publish videos on the React, Redux, and JavaScript ecosystem, and I'd love to share them with you. Happy coding!